Hi, I'm Kenny Yates. Welcome to Hold the Hope. And this is our regular weekly message. And today is the Jewish holy day, Rosh Hashanah. Literally means head of the year. It is one of two high holy days in Judaism, which includes Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. The, the Jews celebrate two New Years. The first is the religious New Year. And the second is this that we're celebrating now, the Civil New Year. So the Jewish Civil New Year is celebrated in the seventh month on the Jewish calendar, which is the month of Tishri, which coincides with our September or October. It's also the Feast of Trumpets, as described in the book of Leviticus, chapter 23, verse 23 through 25. The Jewish religious New Year is celebrated in the first month of the Jewish calendar, which is the month of Nisan, and that coincides with uh, March or April. And that is described in the book of Exodus, chapter 12, verse 1 through 2. Today's message is entitled, Rosh Hashanah. Now, the word Rosh Hashanah does not appear in Scripture. But because of Jewish beliefs and, and Jewish tra traditions, they've made this day the civil new year. And it will include lots of synagogue, which is the Jewish church. There'll be a lot of scripture read, a lot of, of explaining, a, a lot of telling of the biblical stories. There'll be lots of family, lots of laughs, lots of talking, and lots of food and lots of sweets. Apple dipped in honey is a prime staple on this day, signifying the sweetness of the new year, or the hopes of it. Would you please turn with me to Leviticus chapter 23, verse 23 through 25. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to the people of Israel saying, in the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you shall observe a day of solemn rest, a memorial proclaimed with a blast of trumpets, a holy convocation. You shall not do any ordinary work, and you shall present a food offering to the Lord. Today, Sunday, September the 25th, 2022, at sundown, Jews all across the world will celebrate Rosh Hashanah their civil new year. And again, it means the head of the year. Rosh Hashanah commences a critical period in Judaism known as the Days of Awe, or High Holy Days, which are the 10 days between the end of Rosh Hashanah and the holiest of the Jewish feasts, Yom Kippur, or the Day of Atonement. Rosh Hashanah is a two-day celebration which will end on the evening of Tuesday, September the 27th, 2022. Why two days, you ask? Well, the Jewish calendar is based on the cycles of the moon. The first day of the new year is established when the first sliver of the new moon is seen. The Sanhedrin would send runners to inform the people that it is the first day of the month. But because communication was slow in those days, some people did not get the news that it was the first day of the month until the next day. And thus, they were unable to, to, to celebrate the feast. So they decided to make it a two-day celebration so that everybody, everyone would have the opportunity to partake in the festivities. It is believed on that day, Rosh Hashanah, God looks down on all mankind and takes special note of our behavior, takes special note of our attitude, takes special note of our relationship with Him. It is also the day when God decides who will live and who will die, who will be blessed and who will not be blessed. It is believed that on that day, if all is well, 
if all is well with your soul, then your name is written in the book of life. The Jews believe that on this day, God created the heavens and the earth or finished his creation. It was the day that creation was completed and Adam was formed. Therefore, the next 10 days begins the days of all, which will culminate on Yom Kippur, the day of atonement. It's a time of reflection. It's a time of self-evaluation. Pay special attention to things that you might have done wrong during the past year. Things that you need to get right. Things that you may need to make right. People that you may have hurt and that you need forgiveness for. People that you may have offended that you need to ask their forgiveness. You need to take special look in areas that you need to improve. Things that you fell down on in the past year that this year you will not stumble over. In other words, it's a time for spiritual realignment with your God. It would do us well to do the same thing. Not just on this day alone though, but every day of the year to make sure that we're living right to make sure we're living the way God expects us to live making sure that we're doing the right thing and for the right reasons in my research I found something really interesting a poem Onatana Tokef is a poem read on that day and there are three words found in this poem. Those words are Teshuva, Tefila, and Zadaka. The word Teshuva is often translated repentance. Although it may have an element of repentance, it apparently is so much more than that. So just rendering it repentance will miss the mark. It actually comes from the root word meaning return. Now think about this for a moment. This feast is the last of the seven Jewish feasts for the year. Could it be that this is a call to prepare for the return of Christ because all the feasts have now been fulfilled? Because this day, Rosh Hashanah, is also the feast of trumpets. I want you to look with me at Numbers chapter 29, verse 1. On the first day of the seventh month, you shall have a holy convocation. You shall not do any ordinary work. It's a day for you to blow the trumpets. Now, consider this. Trumpets are either to announce something or to call, to call people to perform an action. Whether it's a call to war, a call to assemble, or the, the call to beginning of judgment, or a call to march. Let us take a quick look at our marching orders when the time comes. It's found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51 through 55. Paul says, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. For this imperishable body must put on imperishable, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When the imperishable put on the imperishable, and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? This all happens at the last trumpet, when all things are fulfilled. Listen to what um, Zechariah says in Zechariah chapter 9, verse 14 through 15. Then the Lord will appear over them, and his arrow will go forth like lightning, and the Lord will sound the trumpet and will march forth in the whirlwinds of the south. The Lord of hosts will protect them, and they shall, shall devour and tread down the sling stones. 
They shall drink and roar as if drunk with wine and be full like a bowl, drenched like the corners of the altar. Again, all of this will happen at the sound of the last trumpet. Now the word to Philip, it means prayer. Paul instructs Timothy and by default, he instructs us to always pray. Look at what Paul wrote in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 through 4. First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. This is good. And it is pleasing in the sight of God, our Savior, who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. We are taught that God is pleased when we offer up supplications, prayers, and intercessions, and thanksgiving for all people. Not just for some people, but for all people. You know, I heard a Jewish story about a little boy, about eight years old. He was standing at the edge of the surf. And he was frantically waving his hands and, sh and jumping up and down. And he was shouting, I'm here, I'm here. A man was watching him. He was serving this little boy. And he, he, he looked to see what that little boy was focused on over in the distance. And long in the distance on the horizon, he saw the form of a ship. And this little boy was focused on that ship. And he was waving his hands and he's jumping up and down and shouting, Here I am! Here I am! And the man felt sorry for this little boy. Because he knew that this large freighter was too far out to, to see this little boy. Much less hear this little boy. But nonetheless, this little boy was not deterred. He was not worried about the distance. He was focused. And he shouted, here I am, here I am, shouting and jumping up and down and waving his hands. Not long after, the man began to hear the turning, the screaming of that metal as that ship began to turn and began to head towards that little boy. And in awe, this man looked at the little boy with his mouth open. And the little boy said, sir, you do not understand. My dad is the captain of that ship. And this is a story told by some rabbis to teach the importance of prayer. How God answers even if he seems to be miles and miles away. Even if we seem to be a dot and insignificant in our own eyes. Even if we seem to be too far away that he does not see us and he cannot hear us. Yet, we are to pray. We are to seek for God will hear us. He is Emmanuel. He is God with us. And God is only a prayer away. All we got to do is to get down on our knees. And call on the name of our God, and he will hear. Jeremiah 29, verse 12 through 14 says, Then you will call upon me, and come, and pray to me, and I will hear you. You will seek me, and find me. When you seek me with all your heart, I will be found by you, declares the Lord. And I will restore your fortunes, and gather you from all the nations, and all the places where I have driven you, declares the Lord. And I will bring you back to the place from which I sent you into exile. This is a call for the wayward Jews who had turned away from God. This is a call for them to return to their God, that he might return to them, that he might give them back the promise that he had in store from the, from the very beginning, the promise of living in their own land. We also have a promise from our God. We have a promise that one day, Jesus will split that eastern sky and he will come back to get us. He will take us to be where he is and there we will be for him, with him forever and ever and ever. No more to wonder, no more to roam the earth, no more to be lost 
in, in the world. No more to be looked upon and spit upon and to be looked down at. We ought to pray that our God, because one day when Jesus comes back, he's going to come back for each and every one of us who call upon his name, who seeks his face. From every tribe, every tongue, every nation, Jesus will collect those that belong to him and take them out of the world. Therefore, all men ought to pray, but especially Christians. Christians ought to pray and seek their God, that when he comes back, he will save them out of that great and dreadful day, the day of the Lord. The last word in this poem is zedakah. It is a Hebrew word meaning righteousness. And it is commonly used to signify charity. As it's charity as a religious obligation, a re obligation to do what is right and just. It is not based on financial standards. It's not based on your ability, but on your moral conscience. It is a obligation. It comes from the root word meaning righteousness, fairness, and justice. Now Proverbs chapter 1 verse 3 instructs us to do what is right, what is just, and what is fair. The Word of God tells us that a three-strand cord is not easily broken. If we do what is right, what is just, and what is fair, we will not easily fall. So on this day, Rosh Hashanah, meaning the head of the year, another feast is celebrated. It is, it is one of the seven prescribed feasts. It is the Feast of Trumpets. Look at what Joel says in chapter 2, verse 1. Blow a trumpet in Zion, sound an alarm on my holy hill. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is near. And if we look around, that word is being fulfilled. For the day of the Lord must be near. Because all that is going on in the world, evil is called good. Good is called evil. Christians are being persecuted. Christians are being looked down at and Jesus, the name of Jesus, is being blasphemed. Sometimes it's being blasphemed by his own people in his own church. Members of the body of Christ are living according to the flesh. They're more interested in pleasing the flesh than to pleasing their God. They're living as if they will not have to give an account to the judge of the whole world. These are Christians that I'm talking about. People who call themselves Christians. People care more for trees. They care more for animals than they care for human life. Little babies still in the womb are being murdered daily because they're not even considered, they're not even seen as human. And it's all done with the approval and the encouragement of world governments. They call it a woman's right to choose while God sees it as child sacrifice. We're sacrificing our own children just as those ancient civilizations sacrificed their children. There's no difference there. And the church is behind it. The church will fight for a woman's right to murder her own child. Not all the church, but some of the church. And you know who you are. The warning blasts of the trumpet of God are sounding in the spiritual Warning his people to get ready because he is on his way back. Get ready to meet their Savior, their Lord, our Savior Jesus Christ in the air because he's coming back for us. He will not forsake us here. He will not leave us here forever, but he has a plan to come back for us. Matter of fact, there are reports all around the world of people hearing the sound of trumpet blasts. So many people have reported the strange sound that it even made the news. I want to visit the book of Revelations really quickly. I want to just read what the first four angels who sound the first four trumpet blasts in the last days. Just four. There's going to be seven of them 
we just want to read the first four. Revelations chapter 8, verse 6 through 13. Then the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared to sound them. The first angel sounded his trumpet, and there came hail and fire mixed with blood, and it was hurled down on the earth. A third of the earth was burnt up, and a third of the trees were burnt up, and all the green grass was burnt up. The second angel sounded his trumpet, and then something like a huge mountain, all ablaze, was thrown into the sea. A third of the sea turned into blood. A third of the living creatures in the sea died. A third of the ships were destroyed. The third angel sounded his trumpet, and a great star, blazing like a torch, fell from the sky on a third of the rivers and on the springs of water. The name of the star is Wormwood. A third of the waters turned bitter, and many people died from the waters that had become bitter. Interestingly enough, the Ukrainian and Russian word for Wormwood is Chernobyl. Chernobyl is considered the worst catastrophic nuclear accident in the history of the world and many people died. Now I'm not saying that Chernobyl and the Warmwood Star are the same incident. I just find it peculiar that apparently the Chernobyl Warmwood Memorial is an angel blowing a trumpet. But let's move on. Verse 12. The fourth angel sounded his trumpet, and a third of the sun was struck, a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, so that a third of them turned dark. A third of the day was without light, and also a third of the night. As I watched, I heard an eagle that was flying in midair call out in a loud voice, Whoa! Whoa! Woe to the inhabitants of the earth because of the trumpet blast about to be sounded by the other three angels. This is just the first four. The next three are even deadlier. So much so that three woes are given to the inhabitants of the world. Woe! Woe to the inhabitants of the earth because of the trumpet blast about to be sounded by the other three angels. What a time of dread. What a time of sorrow. The time for these angels to blow their trumpets, I believe, are upon us. And today, the day of the Feast of Trumpets, we ought to take into consideration that the Lord, our Lord, Jesus, is coming back soon. We ought to get our affairs in order. We ought to draw close to our God. We ought to call upon His name. We ought to reach out to Him in prayer and supplication. We ought to call on Him and make sure that we have aligned ourselves with our God. We ought to pray diligently for our lost loved ones, for our friends who have not come in, for our neighbors and our co-workers who are still all wandering out in sin. But as for you, let me ask you, are you ready to meet the Lord? Are you ready for the return of Jesus? Are you ready to face Him as your Savior and your friend? If you're not, you will face Him as your judge. So would you like to face Him as Savior? This is how. Just ask Him for forgiveness of your sins. How you ask? Pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me, Lord. Help me to live for you. Help me to align myself with you, Lord God. Lord Jesus, I accept your free gift of life. I accept your free gift of salvation. Thank you now for forgiving me of all my sins. Thank you, Jesus. 
Amen. If you pray that prayer, the Lord is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. What you need to do now is to get yourself a Bible. Begin to read that Bible every single day. Highlight the verses that are meaningful, the promises that are meaningful. Highlight those and commit them to memory. Find a Bible-believing church, a Bible-believing church that still believes that there's a right way to go and a wrong way to live. And they believe that thus saith the Lord. Not one of those compromising progressive churches that says that you can live anyway because God loves you too much. Well, God loves you for sure, but He's a just God. If you're not right with Him, if you do not want anything to do with Him, and you can only show that by living for Him, then you have made your decision. But all you who have made a commitment, may the Lord strengthen you, may the Lord keep you. And those who have not, may the Lord bring conviction on your heart. I want to say thank you so much and may we all be ready to meet him when he comes back to get us. Thank you again. I'm Kenny Yates. This is Hold the Hope. Be blessed and stay blessed.